safely managing chemicals in the production is good for the business and beneficial for everyone. Therefore, you need to minimize the chemical's harmful impact on health and environment. Effective chemicals management means that policies, procedures, and practices are in place that address the different aspects of the life cycle of chemicals in the factory. How to select and purchase chemicals, identify and assess chemical hazards, manage the risk, provide chemical safety training, safely store and handle chemicals, as well as dispose waste and deal with emergencies. In this regard, safety data sheets, also known as materials safety data sheets, are the key source of information. Compiled in a standardized format, these safety data sheets contain all kinds of helpful information about the chemical substance or formulation. For example, the hazards and risk, recommendations on the safe use of chemicals, personal protective equipment, and what to do in an emergency. Keep them visible and readily accessible. The safety data sheets should be provided by the manufacturers, importers, or suppliers of that chemical, according to national regulations. It is best to make this part of your chemical purchase requirement. The content and structure of safety data sheets should be in line with the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, which is an internationally agreed upon standard managed by the United Nations. The GHS system also harmonizes the use of chemical hazard labels, markings for chemical containers, and the chemical hazard classification. Check the labels on the container and the information on hazard identification in the safety data sheet. This should be done in order to better understand the type and severity of hazards to health and environment that the chemical may pose. For example, these labels indicate that the substance may be corrosive to skin, eyes or lungs, and toxic to aquatic life. To conduct the risk assessment, check who may be exposed in which way to these hazardous chemicals, and whether the chemicals may do harm when being released into air, water, or soil. Systematically record the findings of the risk assessment, for example in a template like this one. Since the risks may vary between workplaces and tasks, the risk assessment will have to be situation or task specific. For example here, when a worker transfers a chemical. First, identify the chemical substances used in this activity and their hazards. Second, locate which and how many workers are possibly at risk of exposure to that hazardous chemical. Next, identify the nature and level of risk of that activity. In this case, there is a high risk of splashing, which may cause skin or eye burns. Finally, the risk assessment helps to decide what actions to take for controlling the risk. For example, the worker may have to use protective equipment, such as a face shield and gloves, while pouring as prescribed in the safety data sheet. If feasible, the best option to control the risk is to avoid using such hazardous substances. These actions need to be supported by a chemical safety handling training, which educates workers on the possible chemical hazards, how they may be exposed, how to handle chemicals properly, and how to protect themselves. All workers, especially those who regularly handle chemicals, should receive chemical safety training. A qualified trainer should instruct the employees and take current needs and requirements into consideration. Keep up-to-date records of the training classes. And monitor the training impact. Standard operating procedures, work instructions, checklists, and guidance by the management on safe work practices will help to reinforce the training lessons. For example, how workers should safely handle and store chemicals. Maintain updated inventory records on types and amounts of chemicals being stored. And respond to emergencies such as a leak or spillage. In addition to training, a number of provisions may be necessary to guarantee safe storage and handling. For example, for safe storage of chemicals, there should be provisions for separation of incompatible chemicals, adequate storage of halogenated solvents, adequate storage of flammable liquids, and secondary containments. Engineering controls such as ventilation will help to contain and reduce the release of chemicals into the workplace. In addition, the provision of adequate personal protective equipment 
will safeguard the workers when other controls are not feasible. Chemicals management also involves planning and making emergency provisions, such as spillage and leak control facilities, fire protection and response measures, and a drainage system connected to the effluent treatment plant. Such practices and provisions also include those for the management and disposal of chemical waste. Hazardous chemicals can have a significant impact on human health and the environment. Therefore, chemical waste needs to be disposed according to your national regulations. In the absence of adequate national regulations, international standards and buyer's guidelines can provide guidance. Also, check the disposal procedures from the safety data sheets. Dyeing, finishing, and garment washing are several manufacturing processes that produce wastewater containing waste dyes, oil, and other chemicals. To prevent contamination of water and soil, you need to treat wastewater properly before discharging it. The steps for wastewater treatment differ among factories, but usually include primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment steps. You must pay special attention to the proper disposal of the treatment sludge, which is generated during the treatment process. The treatment plant must comply with the national requirements. Good treatment performance depends on plant design, applied chemicals, and the competence of the operating personnel. Also identify and explore opportunities such as recycling and reuse of water, product selection, product substitution, and process modification in order to reduce pollutant and toxic chemical loading in discharges. All hazardous waste, including the treatment sludge, should be packed, labeled, and stored properly before collection. Secondary containment should be provided for all above-ground storage tank and other hazardous material containers in order to minimize the chance of hazardous chemicals to leach into the environment. Be sure to use licensed waste collectors for these hazardous wastes. Factories must provide physical, chemical, and environmental hazard information to their qualified waste transporters and the final waste disposal facility. Do not forget to regularly update your waste disposal records. All these elements for safely managing chemicals in your production form essential parts of the chemical management system of a factory. As an overall guidance for such system, the factory should formulate a chemical policy that outlines the factory's commitment to chemical management. The policy should also specify how compliance with legal and other requirements is to be achieved. For further guidance and training on how to set up a chemical management system and safely handle chemicals in line with legal and customer expectations, contact the Partnership for Sustainable Textiles.